Hello everyone. Back again with film recaps. In this video, I'm going to recap one of the horror mystery films from 2015, titled The Invitation. Before we get to the storyline, I'd like to wish everyone a happy and great day. Without further ado, let's get straight to the storyline. The movie begins as we see our protagonist, Will, with his girlfriend, Kira. They are heading to a dinner party hosted by Will's ex-wife, Eden, and her new partner, David. Kira tells him they should not go if he's not ready, but he assures her that he's fine. It is revealed that Will and Eden divorced after the accidental death of their young son. During that time, Eden found solace in a grief support group, where she met David, and they suddenly disappeared to Mexico, but have now returned after two years. But as the couple is engrossed in conversation, Will accidentally hits a coyote on the road. He exits the car to check on the animal, only to find it gravely injured and in pain. Having no other choice, he grabs a tire iron, and ends up killing the coyote to put it out of its misery. After a while, the couple arrives at a luxurious mansion where Will used to live, but he clarifies that the place belongs to Eden, and was never his. He then reunites with his old friends, which include Tommy, his boyfriend, Miguel, and friends Ben, Claire, and Gina. They are all excited to see each other after a long time. Will then inquires about their other friend, Choi, who is revealed to be Gina's boyfriend, but Gina explains that he is running late as usual, and she can't get reception here. Just then, the hosts, Eden, and David, arrive and excitedly greet everyone. Eden gives Will a long hug and expresses how much she missed him. David also thanks Will, for coming and claims that they have so much to discuss and celebrate. After this, he takes out an expensive bottle of wine and starts pouring it for the guests. During their conversation, Will notices a half-naked girl in the corridor, horrifying him. He thinks it's just his hallucination, but soon the girl arrives, and introduces herself to everyone as Sadie. She reveals that she met David and Eden in Mexico and is now living with them. After this, everyone starts to enjoy the party, but Will senses that something is wrong. He begins to snoop around the house, and as he enters the kitchen, he has a flashback to the time when Eden attempted to slit her wrist many years ago. Just then, Eden startles him from behind, saying he looks handsome. Will takes this opportunity to ask her about the changes in the house, particularly the newly installed bars on the windows. Eden explains that it's for security, as she lived here alone for a while. He then asks how she's been, and she responds that she's doing amazing and is free from useless pain and suffering. At this moment, Ben shows up, and Eden begins ranting to him about how pain is optional and that anyone can find happiness. All negative emotions are simply chemical reactions that can be expelled from the body. Hearing this, Ben jokes that it sounds a bit crazy, but Eden unexpectedly slaps him hard across the face, and tells him to stop making jokes about everything. After she leaves, Ben and Will discuss her shocking behavior, noting that both she and David are acting strangely today. Ben speculates that she might have lost her mind because of past events. He then comments that Will seems to be holding up well, but the latter admits that he also hasn't been able to move on. When they head to the living room, Eden apologizes to Ben, and hands him a drink. Will then gets into a conversation with Claire, who is worried about his well-being. Like him, she also feels that the atmosphere is very weird. Just then, someone pulls up outside, and they assume that it's their friend, Choi. However, it turns out to be another man who is unknown to the group. David introduces the man to everyone, saying his name is Pruitt, and they met in Mexico. Meanwhile, Gina is worried about Choi, who was supposed to arrive hours ago. Since there's still no reception, she requests to use the landline, but Eaton mentions that it's been disconnected because they forgot to pay the bills while they were away. Soon after, David locks the front door, and keeps the keys to himself. Will asks for the reason behind it, so David explains that there was a recent break-in at a nearby place, and that's why they are just being cautious. Will claims he didn't hear about that news, and asks what happens in the case of a fire breakout. Hearing this, David reluctantly puts the key back in the lock, and asks him to relax. After some time, Will steps outside to gather firewood, but he continues to be haunted by memories of the past. He then sees Eden going to her room, and putting something in the drawer. So, 
after bringing the firewood inside, Will immediately sneaks into her room, and is confused to find some unlabeled pills. He takes one of the pills, right when David arrives and asks him to come back to the party. In a flashback, we see Eden and Will in a romantic moment. Suddenly, their son walks into the bathroom, but they quickly send him back to bed. In the present, David and Eden inform the group that they have joined a spiritual group called The Invitation, and both Sadie and Pruitt are also members. The group soon realizes that it's a cult, but David clarifies that it's simply a community of grieving people coming together and helping each other, and that the members are from various parts of the world. Following this, David decides to show the group a recruitment video. In the video, the cult leader from Mexico reveals his community, and explains that their family welcomes anyone seeking to help themselves. He asserts that the human brain possesses the ability to heal, and he has dedicated his life to rewiring traumatic experiences. Moments later, the cult leader and some members are seen gathering around a woman who is on the verge of death. The leader asks who she is excited to see, and the woman replies her late father and husband. He then comforts her, saying they will all be waiting for her on the other side, and urges her not to be scared. The leader also promises that soon all the pain she has endured will come to an end. Shortly after, the woman passes away, and the leader asks the other members to join in, and feel her spirit. Everyone in the room is unable to believe they just witnessed someone's death, but David and Eden try to convince them that they just wanted to show that death isn't something to be scared of. David then explains that when he lost his wife, he turned to cocaine to cope with his grief and was in a mess. However, after joining the invitation, he found relief from the pain and regained control of his life. He also begins discussing Eden's struggles with the death of her son, but this conversation makes Will very uncomfortable. Moments later, the doorbell rings, so Pruitt and David answer the door and talk to some unknown people. While talking to Gina, Will is distracted by David's interaction at the front door with those strange people, and David soon claims that they were just neighbors looking for a party. Afterward, Will seems very disturbed, so he excludes himself from the group and stays in the kitchen. Miguel inquires if everything's fine. Since he is a doctor, Will shows him the pill he found in Eden's drawer, and asks what it is. Miguel identifies it as a barbiturate, but claims that it's only dangerous if one takes too much of it. Later on, David apologizes to everyone for making them watch the disturbing video. He then suggests that they should play a game called I Want, where everyone just expresses what they want. Sadie takes the initiative, and wants to tell everyone that she loves all of them. She then kisses Gina directly on the lips, which takes everyone by surprise. Following this, Pruitt wants to share about his late wife, and gathers everyone's attention. They were married for eight years, and one day, they had a foolish argument while he was drunk. In a moment of anger, he struck her, causing her to accidentally hit her head and pass away. He reveals that he spent seven years in prison for his actions, yet upon his release, he was the same man. Pruitt says that only by accepting the invitation could he get rid of that evil part of himself. He admits that he still misses his wife, but doesn't grieve or feel guilty anymore, since he knows he'll see her in a better place. Hearing this story, everyone is horrified. Claire in particular seems very uncomfortable, so she decides to leave. David tries to convince her to stay, but Will insists that she should be allowed to depart if she wants. While Claire is leaving, Pruitt informs her that he parked his car behind of hers and needs to move it. They then exit together, and Will watches on from the window. He observes Pruitt moving his car to allow Claire to depart. However, as she drives away, Pruitt stops her for some reason. And David suddenly interrupts Will, and claims he wants to talk to him alone. David asks why he is so suspicious of him, and why he seems to have a problem with everything. Here Will apologizes, and admits that perhaps he wasn't ready to come here tonight, so David says they must continue moving forward and living their lives. After some time, the group sits down for dinner, but Will still appears very disturbed. He keeps having flashbacks of the day of a birthday party where his son died accidentally. Feeling overwhelmed, he decides to step outside to clear his head. When he goes downstairs, he glances through a cracked door, and observes Sadie making weird faces in a mirror. She notices him, so he quickly makes his way outside. As Will is by the pool, Sadie asks about his relationship with his girlfriend, and claims Kira seems distant from him. To his surprise, Sadie suggests that they make love right here. 
She explains that they shouldn't deny themselves pleasure, and that everyone used to be intimate with each other back in Mexico. However, he refuses her advances and tells her to go back inside. Afterward, Will tries to find a signal to call Choi since he hasn't shown up yet. Tommy asks what's going on with him, and Will expresses that something feels off here, and he can sense it. Hearing this, Tommy asks him to stop behaving strangely, stating that he is scaring other people. After he leaves, Will finally gets some signal and listens to a voicemail from Choi. It turns out that Choi was at the front door earlier in the evening, but he forgot to grab dessert. So, he left a voicemail for Will to pick up the dessert on his way. This horrifies our hero, and he silently joins the group at the dinner table. Suddenly, the lights go off, and Eden appears with a birthday cake for Miguel. Feeling agitated, Will angrily asks the host couple where Choi is, and reveals about the voicemail, and Choi was here at the front door earlier. Eden insists that he never showed up, so Will questions why they were invited to dinner suddenly after two years, and why the two strangers from the cult are present. When the atmosphere starts heating up, Kira tells Will that they should leave, but he is adamant on finding out about Choi. Just then, the doorbell rings, and to their surprise, it's none other than Choi himself. He explains that he had indeed been at the front door earlier but had to leave due to urgent work. Seeing this, Will is super confused, he begins crying and apologizes for his harsh behavior. Eden and David tell him that it's alright because he's part of their family. Later, as Will is alone in the backyard, Kira comforts him. He tells her that he is in pain and still can't move on from his son's death. He blames himself for what happened, but Kira tries to encourage him that moving forward is not a betrayal. Will then goes to visit his son's bedroom alone. During this, he starts having flashbacks of his son, making him emotional. Just then, he notices David heading to the backyard, and lighting a red lantern. In the next scene, Will opens the laptop on which the recruitment video was played. He watches another video featuring the cult leader, who encourages the members not to be afraid, and reminds them that a reward awaits if they take the necessary steps and give themselves up. Will then joins the rest of the group at the dinner table, where they are poured another glass of wine. Before they raise their glasses in celebration, David is relieved they're all in this together. They raise their glasses to a better world and peace, while Gina has already taken a sip, but then Will tells them not to drink. Seeing this, Sadie angrily approaches Will and accuses him of ruining everything. Will pushes her, causing her to fall to the ground and hit her head on the corner of a desk. The group rushes to check on the unconscious Sadie and tries to revive her. And as if that wasn't enough. Gina? Baby. They notice that Gina has passed away, and is foaming at the mouth. With this, panic ensues, and Miguel attempts to check on Gina. But then this happens. Miguel is shot by David. Pruitt then takes the gun away from him, while the friend group attempts to escape. But instead, Pruitt shoots Choi dead, and approaches him to finish his job. They all start running away, and an angry Tommy tries to attack David, but Kira slashes him with a knife. They rush downstairs, and it is here that they realize that all of the doors are locked. Will and Kira lock themselves in a room, but realize that all the windows are barred and locked. While hiding, they notice David and Pruitt dragging Ben to the backyard, where they shoot him. Witnessing this horrific act, Kira begins to panic, but Will calms her down. He claims that they can deal with these maniacs, as they are just humans. The two quietly make their way down the hallway, where they overhear David and Eden talking. Eden is appalled by the shooting, claiming that they were supposed to die peacefully from the poisoning. However, David explains that they are chosen, and that they must fulfill their mission anyhow. After they leave, Will takes Kira upstairs, to find out if there's an exit. They come across Sadie along the way, and it appears she has impaled herself with a fireplace poker. Will cautiously takes the poker from her, and they continue forward. Unfortunately, before they can go any further, Pruitt arrives upstairs with a gun. He gets ready to shoot them, but Will quickly dislodges the gun from his hands, and the two engage in a fight. Pruitt gains the upper hand, and is about to kill him, but luckily, Kira steps up, and strikes Pruitt with the fireplace poker continuously until he dies. Following this, Will and Kira make their way downstairs, 
but they come across Eden with a gun. She immediately shoots Will but misses any vital organs. She apologizes to him, and then decides to shoot herself in the stomach. Soon after, David arrives there while calling out for Eden. Will tells him that she has shot herself, but David claims to be glad, saying she is with the others now. Will then warns him not to come closer because they have a gun, but David isn't worried because he's going to die soon anyway. But then, Tommy, who survived the earlier stabbing, intervenes. The two engage in a fierce fight, during which Tommy manages to kill David by stabbing him in the stomach. In the aftermath, Will and Kira approach Eden, who is on the verge of death. She says that she misses their son and asks Will to take her outside. He obliges out of pity and soon, she passes away. After this, the three survivors hug each other and break down in tears. Will and Kira then hear police sirens. At this moment, the couple suddenly hears screaming voices, a shot from the nearby house, and notices red lanterns lit up in several neighboring houses, just like the one David had lit earlier. This makes them realize that there is a mass cult suicide taking place in the area, and there are likely more cult members killing their friends. Okay guys, that's all the recap of the Invitation 2015. Thanks for watching. See you again in the next video.